Hey everyone, it's Aaron here from Rudy Visuals. Hope everyone is doing well. And in today's video, we're talking all about this big guy right here. This is the 70 to 200 and five reasons why you need one. Now this specifically is the Sony 70 to 200 F 2.8 G Master 2, but this video pretty much covers any kind of 70 to 200 lens, regardless of what system you shoot on. And we'll come in from the point of view of a hybrid user who needs to shoot both video and stills. So let's not waffle around too much today and kick things off straight away with number one. So first up, you cannot talk about a 70 to 200 lens without mentioning the cliched word, I know, but it's true, it's versatility. But there is a reason why everyone keeps using that word for this lens, because it really can be used for almost anything. Having such a wide focal range available to you means a 70 to 200 can be used for portraits, for weddings, sports, events, wildlife, music, performances, street photography, landscapes, for B-roll, interviews, literally anything. There are very few instances when a lens like this is not going to be useful for you, not to mention how that versatility also creates lots of convenience, such as not having to switch out lenses or my favorite thing, not having to walk up and down, say at an event to get a tighter shot. I can just punch in all the way to 200 millimeters. And in most instances, that's enough for me to get what I need. I also love that when you zoom through the focal length, it doesn't extend like other zoom lenses and you also get a constant aperture throughout. The Sony G Master 2 isn't even all that heavy anymore, and I personally use this lens for pretty much all kinds of shoots, from portraits to wedding videos and big corporate films, and it's come up clutch in so many situations. I particularly love the optical stabilization on this particular lens as someone who shoots a lot of video content. This is basically my go-to for B-roll. At number two, it has to be the image quality. Now, the general consensus is that primes equals better image quality, but less convenience, and zooms equals convenient, but lower image quality. Now, that might be true with cheaper zoom lenses, but when you're talking about the first party 7200s, for example, particularly the f2.8 variants, honestly, you'd have to have the eyes of a hawk and be pixel peeping with like a hundred times zoom to notice any real meaningful differences. I've owned both the G Master 1 and G Master 2 versions of the Sony 7200 f2.8, and they're both impeccably sharp and produce great colors, great contrast, the bokeh is buttery smooth and the way it handles things like color fringing and flares, it's got low distortion and vignetting and whether it's for stills or video, the quality is always so good that I honestly couldn't really tell the difference between shooting with a 70 to 200 versus something like an 85 millimeter prime, for example. Coming in at number three is the build quality of these lenses. Whether that's Nikon, Sony, or Canon, the 70 to 200s tend to always be on the beefy side. And as a result of that, you know you're always going to get a tank that's able to withstand tough shooting environments. Typically, you're talking about best in class weather ceiling, higher quality materials, inside and out, excellent handling like smoother and better feeling zoom and focus rings, higher quality feeling buttons, etc. Something that just feels very premium and that justifies that price tag. 70 to 200s are known for being workhorse lenses used by professionals, so they tend to be you know, very robust and tough enough to survive harsh treatment on a daily basis. And this Sony G Master 2, for example, even though it's fairly light for a typical 70 to 200, it honestly feels like military grade. At number four for me has to be the focusing performance. I can't speak for all 70 to 200s, but the ones I have used are generally exceptionally fast focusing lenses. Typically 70 to 200s are very commonly used in shooting sports. And yes, there are 400, 500 and 600 millimeter lenses as well for when you're not able to get close enough to your subject. But the 70 to 200 100 is actually a fantastic option for me for those times when you can get a little bit closer to the action. As a result of this, the lenses have to be able to keep up with those fast moving subjects. This Sony G Master 2 lens is really snappy and precise that it makes shooting any kind of fast moving subject just a breeze. It syncs up really well with Sony's in-camera eye and face autofocus and with subject tracking as well. So I know whether it's for stills or for video, it's an autofocus system that I can depend on. And this leads me up to my fifth and final point, which is that 70 to 200s are more attainable, at least in terms of options compared to a few years ago. So when I first started, I always just thought that 70 to 200s were just way too expensive. And when it comes to like the top of the range, like the Sony G Master 2, they still kind of are pretty pricey, which does suck. But nowadays there are more and more alternative options that can get you that 70 to 200 versatility if you're willing to live with a few compromises. For example, there's some third party options like the Tamron 70 to 180. It's a fantastic budget alternative that's maybe not quite on the same level in terms of 
build quality and performance, but it's gonna get you like 90% of the way there. Then there's also the f4 options as well. There's also great lenses if you don't mind not having f2.8. And with newer versions like the Mark II, the previous versions start to drop in price as well, especially if you look for used and don't mind not having the latest and greatest. So there are ways that you can get a 70 to 200 nowadays without having to give up your kidneys. And even in the case of the G Master II, yes, it is expensive, but I know that I need to use it for almost all of my shoots. I've really like made my money back on this lens pretty much. Plus I know this lens is going to retain its price fairly well if I ever need to sell it in the future. So there you have it, five reasons why you need and should be using a 70 to 200 lens. There are honestly even more reasons, but let's just keep it to five so I don't end up rambling forever. Do you agree with this list? And did I miss anything? Let me know in the comment section down below. Long story short, the 70 to 200 is just a workhorse lens that can pretty much do everything that you throw at it. It's built to last a lifetime, even if you treat it tough and you're going to produce pro level images and video with this lens. And in my opinion, it's well worth the investment. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. If you found it useful, hit that like button and subscribe to see more. You can also follow us on the socials down here. Any questions, let us know down there in the comment section below. And as always, I'll see you on the next video. Peace.